Today we have a special guest again, continuing our series from Fort Bragg. And basically what we did is we got this small room, and so I've cornered <laughs> Dr. Doug Graham. What I want to talk to him about today is Candida. Because a lot of you ask, me, what do you, what, you know, Kevin, you suffered through this Candida issue, you know, you know, what does Dr. Doug Graham say about it? And so, you know, I'm not the type of guy who wants to beat around the bush and, and not go to the guy and say, let's, let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. So we're here. And, and if you don't know who Dr. Doug Graham is, you can go to Food in Sport. So Food N, the letter N, sport.com and check out what he's got to say. But Doug, thanks for being on the show. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for getting started now with a laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Might as well. I mean, health is a very, very serious topic. It's yeah. life and death, but it doesn't mean we can't have a good time while we talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to discuss candida. It's, it's sort of a fun issue. It's, it's a funny issue because people, you know, I've been doing what I do now for over 30 years, and what I find is the same questions just keep popping up. So it's the same question new people asking it, the same yeah. question new people asking it. Uh, I've kind of described the basics of candida issues on my website, on my free Q&A on the website. I've spent pages and pages describing it in the 80-10-10 diet, of mm -hmm. course, but um, essentially it's a fairly simple issue that, that our bodies are designed to take on sugar as the primary fuel that feeds every cell. And we measure the amount of sugar in the body at any given time by measuring what's called their blood sugar. Uh, blood sugar levels remain relatively stable in health, regardless of diet. But the diet can eventually drive different parts of our body into failure, at which point blood sugar problems become more prevalent. So for instance, if your pancreas fails, uh, as most people are most aware of, if your pancreas fails, you can end up with blood sugar problems. You're likely to end up with blood sugar problems. But if your adrenals fail, you're very common, uh, very likely to end up with blood sugar problems as well. If, you're, if your thyroid fails, you're often going to see associated blood sugar problems. And it's, and it's an interesting thing because all three of these organs are related to each other, uh, primarily in the fact that when the adrenal glands kick in, when they, when they produce adrenaline, it stimulates the thyroid and it stimulates the pancreas to do what they do. So the organs of our body function basically the same as the muscles of our body in, in the sense that if we stimulate them and stimulate them and stimulate them again, they eventually go into failure rather than just develop an ability to grow. If, if you stimulate them and then give them plenty of sufficient rest and recovery, well then we can become more powerful and stronger as a result. But, but if you just get stimulation all the time, well it turns out that certainly in America we're, we're adrenaline junkies. Mm -hmm. We're basically adrenaline junkies. We, we advertise a movie as one continuous two-hour adrenaline rush, you know, <laughs> so true. one non-stop. You know, we start our day with food that is promoted for its excitement value. Yeah. Um, certainly the dinner, I mean, as the expression goes, you know, um, who cares about the steak? Just sell the sizzle. And, and everything in our life is geared around it being exciting. We mm -hmm. get we get stimulation day and night. I mean, you watch the news, it, they try every way they humanly can to make it exciting and really get your adrenaline rushing. Uh, TV shows are no different and on and on in every area of life. We just go from one stimulant to the next. So we're doing refined sugars and, and foods that are known as excitotoxins. I mean, how much more ex stimulating can it be than an excito in the name? Mm -hmm. You know, we're eating excitotoxins every time we eat food, basically, because that's what food chemists are paid to put in our food in order to make you want more of it. Right. Well, we get that whole thing and we realize that a lot of people are having experience where their adren adrenals crash and shortly thereafter pancreas crash or thyroid crash. These are our three biggest, three biggest diagnoses being made in medicine today is your adrenal failure, pancreatic failure, and thyroid failure. So we watch all these things happening understanding that your genetics can drive one or the next or the other, which one is going to go first 
or all three at the same time or how it's going to be. Meanwhile, in the background, behind all those, all those organs that have to do with helping us to regulate our blood sugar, mm -hmm. the body is so amazing, so well built, so redundant in its design that even in the face of potential blood sugar problems from adrenaline, from pancreas, from thyroid, it doesn't matter where it has to come from, in the face of some blood sugar abnormality, the body has even further backup systems, buffer systems to make sure that our blood sugar does not remain excessively high for long periods of time. Hmm. For instance, if that were to happen, you can go blind, or you can become highly prone to infection, eventually losing limbs due to the gangrene that results. And, and so it's more than just getting tired because your blood sugar went up too high and then dropped too low. It's, much, it's a much more serious thing. As you say, it's truly life and death. So the body builds in backup systems, or has built in backup systems, and one of those systems is called candida. It's a microbe. It lives in your bloodstream. It lives in all human bloodstream. It's supposed to be there, but it's supposed to be there in a fashion, in a regulated fashion, moderated by our own blood sugar, because the candida consumes sugar. And when sugar is in regular supply, the, in terms of quantity, in a normal supply in terms of quantity, then the amount of candida in your bloodstream remains stable as do all populations of all life forms in the face of a stable food supply, their population remains stable as well. But when the food supply becomes excessive, when blood sugar goes up, the microbes get to have a feast. Mm -hmm. And as microbes do, they duplicate themselves. Their population goes off magnificently, really quickly. This is known in the world of bacteria as a bloom. And so the candida microbe blooms in your bloodstream. Now you've got lots of them. But they're all eating the blood sugar. And in normal situations, they will eat that excess blood sugar, bring blood sugar back down to normal levels, at which point there's no more food, and within hours, the candida levels are back to normal as well just exactly what we would expect to have happen in the ebb and flow of bacteria, the life of a bloom and a, and a I, don't, I don't even know what to call it, the opposite of a bloom, a die off. hard yeah. times, yeah, mm -hmm. die off. Mm -hmm. you know, this happens incredibly quickly, it happens in hours, whereas with, with wolves and deer, for that same cycle to happen could take 12 years. Yeah. You know, times are great for the deer and then all of a sudden, it's really good for the wolves, yeah. and then it's really terrible for the deer. So, but for, in Candida, it happens in hours. 